A young man with a bright future was involved in a murder 20 years ago. From 2004 to 2010, he was sentenced to death for intentional homicide three times, which dashed his hopes repeatedly. In 2015, he was finally acquitted on appeal and released after 12 years in custody. At midnight on October 27, 2003, at Xiang Tan University, a teacher who had just finished work walked out of the laboratory building and suddenly saw a man lying in the grass. He immediately went to check and found that the man had died. The teacher immediately called the university security and reported to the police. While waiting for the police to arrive, some onlookers gathered at the scene, and some of them recognized the deceased as Zhou Yu Hung, a graduate student at the university who was in his second year of study at that time. Zhou was a well-known figure in the mechanical engineering department. He had excellent academic records, was the president of the student union, and would be a teacher in the university after graduation. The autopsy results showed that Zhou had been strangled with a rope, resulting in mechanical asphyxiation. At around 0.30, a man and a woman rushed to the laboratory building and inquired the onlookers what happened there. They were told that Zhou had died. Upon hearing this, the man slumped on the ground, looking miserable. At that time, the leader of the security department of the university noticed the unusual reaction of the couple and controlled them. After the police arrived, the couple was taken to the police station for further inquiry. The man's name is Zhang Ai-yun, and the girl's name is Li Xia. She was Zhou's girlfriend. They had been together for three years during which they broke up and made up many times. Li Xia was also a graduate student at this university and in her first year of graduate study. The chemical machinery major she studied only had six students that year, one of whom was Zhang. Zhang came from a very poor family. His father passed away when he was five years old and lived with his mother since then. Zhang liked sports since he was a kid. He was good at basketball and had good academic performance. After graduating from university, he worked in a machinery factory for two years and was awarded as an excellent employee for two consecutive years. Then he resigned and returned to school in 2003 to continue his graduate studies. Zheng studied in the same graduate school as three of his undergraduate classmates, Zhu Jukai, Wang Meng and Chen Hua Zhang. All three were already in their third year of graduate school at the time. It is Chen who changed the lives of Zhang, Li Xia, and Zhou. On October 8th, the teacher of the chemical machinery major organized a dinner for freshmen. During the dinner, Zhang's maturity and kindness made a favorable impression on Li Xia. After the dinner, Li Xia would call and send messages to Zheng from time to time. Zheng noticed that Li Xia liked him and he wanted to get to know her better. By mid-October, the two began dating, but Zheng didn't know that Li Xia had a boyfriend Zhou at that time until October 24th. On that night, Zhang, Li Xia, Chen, and two Zheng's friends had dinner together. During the chat, Zheng learned that Li Xia had a boyfriend, and they were just on bad terms, not completely broke up. Zheng was upset and got drunk that night. On the same day, Zhou learned that Li Xia was dating Zhang. After considering for two days, Zhou broke up with Li Xia on October 26th and sent a message to her saying that as long as you're happy, then I'm fine with it. This love triangle seems to have a closure, but why was Zhou strangled with a rope the next day? On October 27th at noon, Zhou and Li Xia had lunch together. At around 6 p.m., Zheng asked Li Xia to have dinner. At that time, Zhou, who regretted breaking up with Li Xia, called her saying that he had heard that Zheng was not a reliable man because he had paid for sex with hookers before. Zheng, who was next to Li Xia, heard what Zhou said about him. Zheng was mad and confused about where Zhou got that rumor. Then, Zheng called Zhou to make clear that he had never done such things. During their talk, Zhou told Zheng that he was in great pain over losing Li Xia and that his life would fall apart without her. At this time, Zheng said that he was willing to quit as long as Zhou would treat her well. 
Zheng believed that he had only known Li Xia for several days, but she and Zhou had been together for three years. He didn't want to make things complicated, so he chose to quit. Zheng proposed that they three met at the entrance of the library. Zheng and Li Xia got there earlier. Five minutes later, Zhou came and was accompanied by Chen. He looked weak and tired. Zheng thought he must be very sad about the relationship with Li Xia and advised them to get back together. Then, Zheng left first. Li Xia noticed that Zhou was pale and weak, so she wanted to send him back to the dormitory, but Chen refused, saying that he would send Zhou back. Then, Zhou went back to the dorm with Chen. Around 9 p.m., Chen went to Zhou's dormitory to ask him to go to the laboratory to listen to music. After that, Zhou never came back until his body was found at midnight. Later, not only Zheng and Li Xia were taken away by the police, Chen was also taken to the police station for questioning. Unexpectedly, Chen made a voluntary statement that he saw Zheng strangle Zhou with a rope in the laboratory at around 10.15 p.m. Therefore, the police immediately searched the laboratory. With Chen's identification, the police found a brown rope in the drawer of Chen's desk. The shape of the rope matched the strangulation mark on Zhou's neck, but no DNA was found on the rope. Then, the police also found Zhou's mobile phone and a disposable cup containing tranquilizers in the drawer. The police extracted Chen's fingerprints on the cup. On November 7th, forensic doctors detected the presence of Valium in Zhou's stomach. The police also found that from October 22nd to 27, Chen used a false name to purchase Valium in different hospitals six times. Chen claimed that he only did so to help Zhang. Zhang and Zhou liked the same girl, so Zhang hated Zhou and wanted to teach him a lesson. Chen regarded Zheng as a good friend and wanted to help him, so he bought the Valium. Chen said that in the afternoon of the 27th, Chen put Valium in Zhou's cup, and shortly after Zhou drank the water in the cup, he began to feel dizzy. At around 9 p.m., Chen and Zhou came to the laboratory to listen to music. At 10 p.m., Zheng came to the lab and wanted to talk with Zhou. A few minutes later, Chen heard a noise and went out to check and found Zhou lying on the ground, with Zheng straining his neck from behind with a rope. Zhang asked Chen to help him carry Zhou's body and dump it. Because of this confession, Zheng was officially arrested. The police believed that Chen and Zheng were classmates. Chen had no reason to frame Zheng. But besides Chen's confession, was there any evidence that Zheng was the murderer? The police had three pieces of evidence. First, a fingerprint extracted from Zhou's seat in the laboratory was identified as Zheng's. Secondly, there was a shoe print on the ground below the seat, which was consistent with Zheng's shoe sole pattern. Third, the police found some fibers in Zheng's pants pocket, one of which was the same type as the rope. In fact, these evidences cannot prove Zheng was the murderer. Zheng had been to the lab at least twice that month. His footprints and fingerprints left here didn't mean that they were left on the crime day. The brown fiber in his pants pocket can only prove that it is the same type as the fiber of the rope, but cannot be concluded to be from this brown rope. Not only that, there's also confusion about if Zheng had time to commit the crime. After forensic examination, it was found that Zhou was killed at around 10 p.m. on October 27th. But Li Xia told the police that she was with Zheng from around 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. After Chen sent Zhou back to the dormitory, she went to find Zhang. Although Zhang asked her to go back to Chen and tried to leave several times, Li Xia would not let him go. The two hung around on campus for three hours. At 11.32 p.m., Zhang and Li Xia both received a text message from Zhou saying, I quit. I wish you two happy. Afterward, the two returned to their dormitories separately. When returning to the dormitory, Li Xia was still worried about Zhou thinking of the message he sent to her. Then, she called Zhou's dormitory and learned that he had not returned, so she called Zheng to look for Zhou together. 
Then the two came to the laboratory building and saw a crowd of onlookers. Upon learning that Joe had died, Zeng immediately thought of the text message and believed that Joe committed suicide because of their love triangle. Zhang, who felt that he had caused this, collapsed on the ground. The above is Li Xie and Zhang's recollection of that night. However, in the early morning of October 29th, Zhang suddenly confessed to killing the victim. In an interview later, Zhang said that the interrogating police didn't listen to his explanation, but tortured him. In order to get a moment's respite, Zheng had to confess. On October 29th, the police told Li Xie that Zheng had confessed to killing the victim and that if she continued to lie for him, she would become an accomplice instead of a witness. Li Xie became confused and began to express some vague statements, such as, I'm not sure if he left. On November 11th, Li Xie changed her story for the first time, saying that at 22.20, when she received her sister's call, Zheng had left for 20 minutes. In December, Li Xie was finally released from the detention center. She had repeatedly contacted the police since then, requesting to change her confession to. She was with Zheng the whole time that night. Afterward, Li Xie was imprisoned for two years for making a dishonest confession. The police conducted an experiment to see if Zheng could finish the whole crime within 20 minutes. They travelled between the pavilion where Zheng and Li Xie were at the time and the laboratory building by cycling, jogging and fast walking respectively. Then they pretended to complete the murder and disposal of the body. They found that the required time was 11 minutes, 13 minutes and 17 minutes respectively. That is to say, if Zhang really left for 20 minutes, it was enough time to complete the murder and dispose of the body. But the key is whether Zhang left for more than 20 minutes. Li Xie insisted, after her release, that Zheng was with her from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock the whole time. Unfortunately, Li Xie, the key witness, was imprisoned for false testimony during the first trial and was unable to testify in court. On September 10, 2004, Zheng was sentenced to death for intentional homicide and Chen was sentenced to life imprisonment. Afterward, Zheng filed an appeal. Then, in 2005 and 2010, he was sentenced to death two times more, but he constantly appealed. <laughs> On July 21st, 2015, the court declared Zheng innocent and released him in court on the grounds of unclear facts and insufficient evidence. Since the crime occurred, Zheng had been imprisoned for 4,284 days. He finally could get back home. Mm. Mm. On the other hand, the court found that Chen committed intentional homicide and upheld the sentence of life imprisonment. In other words, it was Chen who killed Zhou. After tricking Zhou into the laboratory, Chen strangled him with a rope while he was exhausted and weak. He then cleaned up the scene, hid Zhou's phone in the drawer of his desk and transferred the body to a remote location outside the laboratory building. At 23.30, Chen sent a message to Zheng and Li Xie on Zhou's phone, saying, I'm out. I wish you two happy. But why did Chen do this? In fact, when he confessed to assisting Zheng in committing the crime, he had explained his motive for being an accomplice. After entering the school, Zhou became a student of Chen's professor under the introduction of Chen. However, Zhou was highly capable and excellent in his studies, while Chen didn't complete his papers well. 
their professor repeatedly criticized Chen and said he was not as good as Zhou. Chen was very jealous of Zhou. In his diary, he wrote that his professor said that his initiative was far inferior to Zhou, which made him feel very painful. He also wrote down his thoughts after watching the documentary of the crime case about committing crimes, it is better to scapegoat someone else and divert attention than to hide it in every way possible. Zheng and Zhou both liked the same girl, which just made Chen find a target to scapegoat. In fact, in terms of emotional logic, Zheng was the winner in the relationship, and it was obvious that Li Xie was emotionally biased towards him. Usually in this kind of relationship, the person whose girlfriend was taken away by another man was more likely to have murderous thoughts, but not Zhang. Chen not only wanted to kill the person he was jealous of, but even wanted to blame someone else for the crime and destroy one more innocent young man's life. Absurdly, his wild scheme of framing someone else actually came true. I've made another case that a student killed her classmate because of jealousy. You could find the Ju Ling case on my channel. Zheng applied for 2.94 million yuan in compensation, but only received 1.27 million yuan, which is about 180,000 US dollars. In 2018, Zheng got married, and he said that all he wanted was to live a good life in the future.